Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Scholes. Today we have our final story from Germany, and this is a story of, well, an emperor. An elected emperor who really doesn't want to be an emperor. This is the Emperor Wenzel. In the middle of a beautiful meadow at Rents near Koblenz stands the famous historical king's chair. Here, where the lands of the three great prelates of Cologne, Mainz, and Treves joined together, the princely seven met to choose the new ruler who was to direct the destiny of the Holy Roman Empire. Here, Charles the Fourth was chosen by the free will of the electors. Here also, the seven elected Wenceslas of the House of Luxembourg, Charles's son, emperor. During his lifetime, Charles had exerted himself very much over the election of his firstborn son, and he even made a pilgrimage to Rennes on the Rhine, where, at the renowned Königstil, the Chancellor of the Kingdom, Archbishop of Mainz, often held important conferences with their graces of Tres and Cologne, and the Count Palatine. This Wenceslas of Bohemia had a great predilection for the Rhine and its wines, and later on, when less by his own merits than by the exertions of his father and the favor of the electors, he became German emperor, his brother inheriting the sandy country of Brandenburg, he had, even then, paid more honors to the Rhine wine than any of its lovers. It afforded him a greater pleasure than the enjoyment of wearing a crown. Finding that a good drink tasted better at the place of its origin, He often visited the brave Count Palatine of the Rhine who dwelt in this blissful country and who had more casks in his cellar than there are saints' days in a year. This proof of imperial confidence was by no means disagreeable to the very noble elector, Ruprecht of the Palatinate, and he neglected no opportunity of striving to ingratiate himself more and more in the emperor's favor. Gallant Ruprecht would not unwillingly have exchanged his little palatinate crown for an imperial one. Sometimes, when his royal guest, becoming very jovial from the wine he had taken, confessed that the high dignity of emperor was becoming troublesome to him, the Count agreed with him, frankly, and never failed to let his imperial master know that the electors were discontented at his careless administration, and would be very well pleased if he retired. Emperor Wenzel listened to all he said with perfect indifference, continuing in the meantime to revel in his wine. One day, the emperor was sitting with his gay companions at the Königstuhl in Rents. They were all very merry, as the cup of Osmanschnasser wine had been already passed around many times. This delicious vintage was very pleasing to Wenzel and all the other drinkers could not find words enough to praise it. While the goblets were being handed round, and sounds of joviality filled the royal hall, the emperor stood up suddenly and, addressing himself to the count, said in a very light-hearted tone, I think the crown which was set on my head would not be very unsuitable to you. Well, I offer it to you. If you are able to place before me and my companions here a wine which tastes better than this Osmanschnasser. There was a cunning twinkle in the Count's eyes as he beckoned to his page. After a while, a servant rolled in a great cask, from which the cups were at once filled. The Count stood up and presented the first goblet to the Emperor. This is my Bacaracha wine, noble lords. Taste it. I can wait for your judgment without fear. They all drank and every face beamed with pleasure. The opinions were undivided in favor of the fiery Bacaracha. The emperor rose and loudly declared he preferred it to the Osmanschauser. He could not praise it too highly, nor drink enough of it. This wine is worth more than a thousand crowns, he said enthusiastically. Wenzel kept his word, and ceded his crown to Ruprecht of the Palatinate, who in turn made the emperor a present of six wagon loads of Bacaracha wine. And that is the Emperor Wenzel, the story of how a Palatinate 
became emperor. And it's also a story of Dan terribly mispronouncing German wines. I always have a hard time with them. And these two were certainly no exception. This is Dan Schultz from The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, We'll be back with three new tales. And as always, thank you all so very much for listening.